Hi, this is Larry Benko again. Recently, there's been a lot of discussions on the Sim Smith reflector about coefficient of coupling. And I've done some experiments and some measurements here to try to understand this better. I believe I understand it, although I'm looking for people to critique this video. Um, and you don't have to be kind in the process of critiquing it if I've got things wrong. So bear with me, please. For, uh, for purposes of the discussion, what I wound was this little teeny core. This is a small core. It's a quarter inch by a quarter inch. It's got two, t on this side, it's got two turns and one tur turn and a binocular core. It's a binocular core with two little holes in it. It goes in and back out as one turn and then around again and back, it'd be two turns. This side is four turns. So it's in and back, in and back, in and back, and one more in and back. I kind of interleaved them where I'd wind one turn of this one, two turns of this one, one of this one, and two, and two more of that one. But it's not twisted and they're not uh, bifiler or anything else inside. The core was a BN43 material, 2402, and uh, it was wound with 30 gauge wire. Anyways, this is what we're going to use for the discussion. I measured this, tried to figure coefficient of coupling out uh, best, as best I could. Uh, looked at it past the parallel resonant point, tried to understand exactly what was going on and see what made the most sense. So without any more of that, um, let's go here and look at what, we, what we've got here. This is a pretty complicated Sim Smith um, example when you see what's in, these, what's in these blocks. But nevertheless, I have a, uh, some files that I measured. I was very, very meticulous with the network analyzer. The, um, let's go back to the picture just real quickly here. These, this is a quarter inch. These leads fit into my uh, my fixture by this much, and th and when I short this shows with a 50 ohm resistor here right now. But I sh when I shorted them, this this these sh this short was very short right across here. So um, the um, the construction is good. The um, calibration in my network analyzer was uh, very good. Uh, the fixture was very small. I did it with two different network analyzers. Got almost exactly identical measurements. So I'm pretty confident on the measurements I measured. This first measurement is two turns. We're on the two turn side and we measure with the four turn side open. This file, it's loaded. And I'm not doing anything with these files other than this is just a placeholder to show the values of the files. I'm not using this impedance to, do, to go into a generator or anything else. Um, this file right here is, again, on the two turn side, we're gonna measure it with the four turn side shorted. And Historically, there's a formula that says that the. Um, oh, let's go. Let's go to that real quickly. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did a whole bunch of work on coefficient of coupling between coils. I was doing it in regards to trying to see how low the coupling could be made, and on some fairly dense low-pass filters. Anyways, coefficient of coupling model is kind of interesting. It's you can think of it as a certain amount of the core that couples perfectly and a certain amount of the core that doesn't. So coefficient of coupling is the, is the fraction of the flux that's produced in, in, one, in, in the core that gets transferred to the other side. It's never one, it's never zero, it's always some number in between. So anyways, the Wikipedia, this is just a thing from Wikipedia that, that uh, they're, you know, it's under their commons license. Um, but basically, there are two me two measuring methods. If you, and I'll, I'll link in this page if people are interested. Um, there's two reason. There's two me me measurement methods here. The measurement methods are pretty simple. One is we drive one side of the of the of the transformer with a voltage with a zero ohm source. We measure the voltage on the other side with an infinite ohm source, and we look at the square root of the ratio of the turns or the inductances. Um, if it's tightly, if it's if it's not an air core one, we can look at the ratio of the turns of the inductances. If it's air core, we look at the ratio of the turns. And K, and K appears here. And that's all there is to it. There's another method that says uh, the short circuit inductance is equal to one minus K squared of the open circuit inductance. And you can do it from either side of the, either side of the transformer and you generally get numbers that are almost exactly the same. If we expect the coefficient of coupling to be very, very small, uh, if we have one minus k squared, which is a small, and k is already a small number, one minus k squared is an incredibly small number, these two inductances are almost exactly the same. This is a better method for sometimes measuring things when, it's, uh, when the coefficient of coupling is small. But when the coefficient of coupling is high, this one minus k squared is good for you. 
because of coefficient of coupling of 0.99, 1 minus um, 0.99 squared is a number that's far away from um, the, uh, the open circuit number, and it's a small number, and it's pretty easy to use. So I generally use this formula. It's always worked well for me in the past, although if I start to look at it critically, you find that there's some flaws in the formula. Anyways, the experiment I did for, the, and this is kind of not in, here, here nor there, uh, it was a bunch of open um, Erwan cores, a couple different toroids, a bunch of uh, all kinds of orientations, all kinds of measurements at, at uh, four different frequencies, coefficient of couplings, and um, basically uh, the gist of the whole thing was, uh, you know, with a little carrier, you, you've seen uh, filters probably wound with, with people who, who switch the turns, right angles, and you can definitely see that in the data here, uh, how much lower the coefficient of coupling is. So anyways, enough of that um, at the moment. Go back to the original question at hand. So, I basically have these two files that I measured. That's what I get, that's what I get, and I can enter into SimSmith. I read those again into this block here. This block's going to be uh, pretty complicated, but let's bear, bear with me and let's go through it. I read a file, let's get it over here. I read a file O, file O stands for file with the, with the secondary open. And it must be, and I must put it into a local variable because local variables are the only variables that can be uh, um, complex numbers. Uh, uh, global variables are scalar numbers. So I read the file in, I put it here into this variable. Then I do a parallel to serial conversion, uh, the standard formula of um, XS squared plus, um, I'm sorry, RS squared plus XS squared, the quantity divided by RS is equal to RP and this is XP, same formula again, and I can convert, a for, uh, yeah, I can convert my file from uh, series, uh, you know, series uh, impedance uh, R plus uh, XS to a parallel one. Then I can convert that, X, that parallel reactance into an inductance. And fundamentally, let's just, we'll come back to this in a minute, but let me close that off for a moment. What I've got here, is if we go down in low frequencies here and let's read the data here at 2 megahertz we have on the open circuit side we have a Q of about probably 5 and a Q here that's oh I don't know it's 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 geez I don't know it's it's moderate but at the low frequencies we have reasonable Q's here what we see is the the series inductance that you would have put in the form that you would have put in the formula that I had on the pre on the uh, website would have been this LS and this LS LS with the circuit shorted on the output LS and that's Nana Henry's by the way LS with this circuit with the outside with the other side open. However, and then there's two equivalent parallel circuits too with for with inductances. But if we move up in frequency and we move up more and more and more, we see that the inductances no longer are, are as stay as close to each other as they were before. So let's go up here to say 20 megahertz. At 20 megahertz, the, if we do the LS and the LS shorted and LS open, it's much different than LS, than LP shorted and LP open. And when we do this formula, let's, this is going to be ugly too. We're going to plot the coefficient of coupling is 1 minus, this is the square root of 1 minus the shorted inductance divided by the inductance with the secondary open. And I'm doing it two times, one using the series inductances values and one using the parallel inductance values. And what we see is, it's kind of interesting here. So if I look at Plotting the series, the series inductances, I see the basically the uh, coefficient of coupling being 0 0.998, 0 .9, dropping 0 0.996 here. But this this little circuit has a resonance around 52 megahertz. At 52 megahertz, I see the coefficient of coupling dropping and dropping and dropping. It drops all the way down, almost all, down to zero, basically. Now some of these numbers way down here can be network analyzer issues, but I see it dropping. However, my experience has always been at parallel resonance in a circuit, the coefficient of coupling is pretty darn near clo close to, to one, not zero. So this really bothers me. However, if we use the parallel formula 
for those inductances in that formula, L equals one minus K, the, quant one, one, the quantity one minus K squared, parenthesis, yeah. Let me, I'll do it here in a second. Uh, again, when we, when we use that formula, this formula, what we see is we see exactly what we see when we measure it. We see, so let's change this, this, this scale here a little bit. We see the, we, so the pink scale is using parallel inductances in the formula. The blue scale is using series inductances. It turns out the parallel inductances also, if you take these inductances, these inductance and resistance values after you convert from series to parallel, these, these resistance values almost completely describe the core loss too as a function of frequency. There's some of this parallel resistance, albeit very, very small, would be in this little bit of wire in here. And that part of it is not core loss. And the, the R that we get um, here includes both of them. But at 300 ohms and stuff, this is all loss. So if we make our model a parallel inductor, parallel, uh, an, R, an R and an L in parallel, coupled to an R and an L in parallel, we get numbers that are very, very close. So I believe that what we need to do is use the parallel values of inductance. And this looks pretty cool. Um, we see at, at resonance, coefficient of coupling going up to one. Now I did have to play a little game here. And the game I had to play was how to put absolute value in for the magnitude of the, um, uh, magnitude of the um, reactants. And the reason I have to do that is because otherwise the, the, the number goes above one. Because beyond this point right here, the, um, the coils measure as if, as if they were capacitors. But I'm using the inductive reactants. So I believe this is the best way to do it. I believe it's the correct way. Likewise, if I bring up this other file, it looks just like this last one, except we're doing it from the four-wire side instead of the two-wire side. Same formula, same everything else again, and I see exactly the same set of conditions. So these two, well, if it would look a little better if I get the scales to be the same. This is 0.982. Okay, now the scales are the same. Those two look pretty much the same. There's a little bit of difference here. I mean, this one shows at 20 megahertz, um, 0.9978, and this one shows at 20 megahertz, 0.998. That's the third de decimal place, um, and that's measured from different sides. I put these um, transformers in, in uh, in SimSmith as just a, um, a ruse block that's by itself, I get uh, uh, numbers very close. I also get numbers that match pretty close to the measured loss I see. Uh, if someone would like to critique this, I would appreciate it. Um, if there's errors, I'll fix it and redo it. If there's no errors, we'll let it stand. But uh, in the meantime, I believe that using the parallel inductance is the right value. Uh, in, in reality, if you think about the circuit, and we can build a, a real quick ruse block with the circuit in it. If we think about the circuit for a minute here, fundamentally what we have is we have an inductor and another inductor. And these inductors are, are effectively coupled together. But not all, the, not all, the, not all of the, the inductor gets coupled, just some of it. Yet, if I look across the inductor as best I can, I see the full voltage. So putting a series resistance in here doesn't seem to make any sense. If I did that, and you notice that the Qs here are, are very, very low. These are incredibly low Qs. I would have a significant voltage drop from this point to this point. But I don't see that voltage drop if I make my model be A circuit with resistors in it. So, and we need to we and again we need we would need to put some kind of a formula in. Whoops. We would need to put some kind of a formula in here, such as uh, K K one. Uh, we're going to couple L1 to L2 with a coefficient of coupling at K, and K becomes a variable then that we can 
that we can control here. So we can enter L, L1, L2, R1, R2. A little, um, a little secret of SimSmith is if you define these variables before SimSmith runs into them, you can force SimSmith to give them to you the, or, the way you want. So if I was to do this, R1, L1, R2, L2, K. Let's just suppose that's the order I want. When I close this off, what do I get? Bring it back up again. Whoops, I got an error somewhere here. What did I do wrong? Oh, need extra. Now I put them in the order I wanted them to be in. Anyways, so I'd suggest that this, is a, this circuit is a very good starting place. All the core losses included there as long as your winding resistance is low. And I get coefficients of coupling that match exactly what you would expect to see them match. Um, if we had done this um, in uh, goes right to one, um, if we had done this in reality, so um, please critique it and uh, thank you very much.